Discovery clears the tower. Discovery, go and throttle up. Discovery, Roger, go for deploy. Thanks, Karen, and everybody in the shuttle program. The crew is go for launch. Contact, I happen to be in orbit. We have followed in their footsteps to get us where we are today. It is October 23rd, and we're joining you today from SpaceX in Hawthorne, California. And you are looking at a live view of Mission Control Hawthorne. And we are awaiting Crew 8 to begin their journey back home at 2.05 p.m. Pacific Time or 5.05 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, departure from the International Space Station with NASA astronauts Matthew Dominic, Michael Barrett, Jeanette Epps, as well as Roscosmos cosmonaut Alexander Grabenkin. I'm Jesse Anderson, the Senior Engineering Manager for Falcon Structures Manufacturing at SpaceX, and we are joined by a familiar face from NASA Communications, Sandra Jones. Thanks so much for having me, Jesse. It's great to be back here. Yeah, thank you to everybody for tuning in to watch live coverage of Dragon completing its eighth crew rotation mission to the space station through NASA's commercial crew program. Crew 9 just arrived on station a few weeks ago on September 29th and will be taking over for Crew 8, who's now headed home. Crew 8's Dragon has become the longest docked to the station for a single mission, spending 232 days docked. Crew 2, which also flew on the same Dragon, held the previous record at 197 days and 20 hours, and Crew 7 was right up there at 197 days. That's right, Jesse. Crew 8 launched earlier this year on March 3rd and has now spent 234 days in space with almost 232 days docked to the International Space Station. During this time, they completed 3,760 orbits of the Earth, traveling more than 99 million statute miles. Endeavor continues to hold the record for the most time in orbit by a crewed spacecraft. Now, the crew is currently suited up, and you do see the crew on your screen there. They're suited up in their spacesuits, and the inside Dragon and the space station hatches are already sealed in preparation for their departure. Once Dragon departs the International Space Station, the crew's flight home is expected to last around 34 hours. Shortly after separation, Dragon will use its Draco thrusters to move away from the station in a series of carefully choreographed maneuvers or departure burns. This increases the distance between the spacecraft and the International Space Station. Dragon will also execute a phasing burn to lower its orbit and line the spacecraft up with its landing location. And following a phasing, Dragon will complete deorbit, reentry, and splashdown. Now, during the deorbit sequence, several events will occur, including trunk separation, closure of the nose cone, a deorbit burn, deployment of the drogue and main parachutes, and then finally splashdown. Dragon is targeted to splashdown off the coast of Florida on Friday, October 25th at approximately 12.29 a.m. Pacific time or 3.29 a.m. Eastern time, where it will be where it will be picked up by a SpaceX recovery vessel and our recovery teams will help egress the crew. And today on board the International Space Station, the crew of Expedition 72 is being led by NASA astronaut Sunny Williams. Also on board Space Station are NASA astronauts Butch Wilmore, Don Pettit, and Nick Haig, as well as cosmonauts Alexei Avchinin, Ivan Wagner, and Alexander Gorbanov. With the 11 crew members on board Space Station and Dragon, as well as three astronauts aboard the Chinese Space Station, there are currently 14 people in orbit as we speak, but soon that number will be back down to 10 as Dragon departs. Of course, just like its approach to the International Space Station, Dragon's departure and deorbit is designed to be fully autonomous. This requires no action from the crew on board. And so earlier today, NASA astronaut Butch Wilmore did help the crew members prepare for departure, and he'll be watching from the cupola, but the prime departure monitoring role falls on NASA's Matt Dominic from Inside Dragon. Mission Control in both Houston and Hawthorne will back them up. And speaking of Mission Control Houston, let's go over to Nilifer Ramji at the Johnson Space Center to talk a little bit about how the station crew have been preparing to send the crew home and what we can expect expect from here until Dragon departs the space station. Nilifer? Thanks so much, Sandra, and welcome to the International Space Station Flight Control Room here at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. 
the flight control team is primed and ready for this afternoon's undocking operations. Today's team is being led by flight NASA Flight Director Paul Konya. Since Crew-9's arrival on September 29th, it's been a busy time during our direct handover period. Over the last few days, the astronauts worked to pack Dragon full of cargo and return uh, for the return journey home. And earlier today, Mike Barrett and Jeanette Epps, both NASA astronauts, worked to remove cold bags in polar freezers, which store cold research samples and scientific experiments into Dragon Endeavor. All of this critical science and cargo is offloaded after we get the crew out following splashdown, and then the scientific samples will be sent to researchers for final analysis in just a few hours. The crew also took their SpaceX suits and got them ready for the journey home. Since getting the hatches closed, all four crew members are now suited up in their seats and standing by for undocking. Additionally, teams at NASA and SpaceX have been preparing for undocking by conducting a series of checkouts of the Dragon spacecraft and space station systems. This is just one of the items teams watch as they prepare for these operations and splashdown opportunities. We want to make sure that crew aboard Dragon and the teams who cover them have the best conditions for a safe and speedy pickup. We've got the final go, no go poll coming up in just a few minutes where the joint SpaceX and NASA teams will make their final call for Dragon Endeavor to depart station. This is one of the many checkpoints in Crew 8's return that will continue all the way up just before the deorbit burn, giving mission managers multiple chances to assess the weather at the splashdown zones and make sure everything is lining up before Dragon departs. We have continued to watch the weather for the last few days, and there is an opportunity for early Friday morning as we expect to see them splash down just over a day from now. Again, we are live here in Mission Control Houston, just standing by for that go, no go poll. And the three NASA astronauts and one cosmonauts are in Dragon Endeavor. They're still docked to the International Space Station. We expect the undocking to take place at about 4.05 p.m. Central, 5.05 p.m. Eastern. And we'll wait for that go, no go poll. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop. Final reconfigurations for undock are complete and nominal. Houston and Hawthorne teams have pulled go for undock at 2100 and separation at 2105. At this time, can you confirm crew readiness for undock? SpaceX Dragon, we are go for undock advisors closed. Okay, copy all.
Perfect, and that go no-go poll that we've been looking for has been completed. So we'll continue to be in joint operations until the spacecraft has enter entered the approach ellipsoid. That's the two by two by four kilometer sphere around the International Space Station that teams use to monitor arriving and departing spacecraft. So over the last eight months, Crew-8 has had what I like to call a astronaut's eye view from the space station. They've had an opportunity to capture some pretty amazing views from low Earth orbit. One of the fo photos that we got was with the space station being about 250 miles above Earth, they're too far away to make things out like cars, people, or buildings, but what they can see are other landmarks around the world. And the long camera lenses they use help zoom in on familiar sites from our home planet. On September 19th, the crew captured a celestial site with Comet C-2023-A3 23, rising through the atmospheric edge towards the sun. The crew had been watching the tail structure evolve over the last little while. And here's another long exposure shot. This was taken on August 11th above the Indian Oceans as star glitter from above. Such a beautiful aurora. And now finally, another iconic shot of the Italian peninsula or what many of us know as the boot of Italy taken on August 1st. Of course, we get satellites collect imagery of Earth too, but the International Space Station is unique in viewing these opportunities because astronauts and cosmonauts can tell scientists on the ground what they are observing and what stands out in real time. So they'll have a few more opportunities to take in those views during their flight home as we prepare for undocking coming up here at about 4.05 p.m. Central, 2.05 p.m. Pacific. But in the meantime, I'm going to toss it back over to you, Jesse and Sandra and Hawthorne. Awesome. Thanks, Nilifer. Separation is approximately is set for approximately 2.05 p.m. Pacific time or 5.05 p.m. Eastern time, which is just under eight minutes from now. At the moment, Dragon is in its final configuration before undocking, and we are waiting for mission operators. Uh, they've already completed their uh, go, no, go poll, um, but they will uh, call out if we will be moving forward with the undocking procedure shortly. And as we mentioned earlier, just like during its approach to the space station, Dragon's departure and deorbit is designed to be fully autonomous, which requires no action from the crew on board. Departure is typically a little bit faster and sometimes easier since the crew doesn't have to stop at any waypoints like we see when a spacecraft arrives. Once the undocking sequence is complete, Dragon will use its Draco thrusters to move away from the station in a series of four departure burns, which are carefully choreographed maneuvers that will increase the distance between the spacecraft and the space station. And then from there, a phasing burn will place Dragon on a trajectory to align it with the splashdown site. And so we did hear that uh, go, uh, go, no, go poll earlier. Everyone polled go. That is just a time for everyone on the ground as well as the crew on board Dragon to ensure things are in place. All systems are go, as the name suggests, for the undocking, which again, we are targeting um, just about seven minutes from now. Now, at the moment, the crew is suited up as they are during a dynamic phase of the flight. We might hear a call out for the crew to also put their visors down ahead of the actual actual undocking itself. Teams work together to ensure everyone is ready to support undocking. And so again, that poll was one final check-in and we did get the go for undocking today. So again, following that confirmation that Dragon is go to undock, we are now waiting for the undocking sequence to begin. Once that happens, it will take less than five minutes for Dragon to separate from the International Space Station, which has been its home for the last seven months. At the planned undock time, SpaceX Mission Control will command the undock sequence start, which begins the automatic undocking process. Now, the first step is for the umbilicals to retract. These umbilicals connect Dragon systems to the space station, transferring power, telemetry. Undock sequence commanded. Dragon. Some good news there. We got that call out that the undock sequence has been uh, commanded. So again, the, the beginning of the sequence is the umbilicals retracting. These umbilicals connect Dragon systems to the space station, transferring power telemetry. 
uh, and commands between the two vehicles throughout Dragon's stay. So now once that's complete, Dragon will unlatch itself from the space station by releasing the 12 hard capture hooks in two separate phases. All that combined will take about four and a half minutes, and then Dragon will be ready to depart the space station and begin. Umbilical D-mate complete and nominal. Again, another good call out there that the umbilicals have been demated. Um, and then Dragon will be ready to depart from the space station once those uh, hooks have been unlatched and begin to move itself further and further away using its thrusters. That's right. And while we sometimes do have views of the undocking as it takes place, we aren't expecting those today uh, just due to handover between our satellites. That happens from time to time. But we might get some views um, throughout the broadcast uh, towards the end once we get past uh, that time period. So Dragon's initial departure from the International Space Station is a little different from other docked uh, spacecraft like the Soyuz, which rely on springs to push them away from the docking port. Dragon will execute two short thruster firings to undock using a combination of the 12 Draco thrusters around the base of the spacecraft. With the first two breaking any stiction between Dragon and the docking port, and the second slowly backing the spacecraft away. We're expecting that call um, for the undocking sequence. Well, we actually did hear that call for the undocking sequence already, so we're, we're well underway here and expecting the actual physical separation to occur in four minutes at 2.05 p.m. Pacific. Yeah, and with Dragon getting ready for undocking, let's go back to Nilifer in Mission Control at Johnson Space Center to take us through undocking. Perfect, thank you so much, Sandra. So we just heard uh, that uh, we are going through um, the undocking commands and they have been sent up. So we'll have, uh, we'll take a look at the umbilical retraction as that is ready. That should probably take just about a few minutes. Uh, once the umbilical hook is disconnected, uh, Dragon will be relying entirely on its own power sources from batteries generated through solar cells instead of taking power and telemetry from the space station. On console today, we have Flight Director Paul Kanya that is managing the First room here in the International Space Station Flight Control Room. Perfect, and we just heard the call out of the first set of hooks being opened. We'll now look for the umbilical retraction and look for two sets of six hooks. So this is going to be the second set of six hooks that will open and that will take just a few minutes. Again, the first set of, set of hooks have begun to open and there are two sets of hooks with six each for a total of 12 hooks in all that will be open today. So as we await confirmation there on your screen, you see, as I mentioned, Flight Director Paul Kanya, and beside him, Capcom, which is Neil Nagata today. They are the primary folks in Mission Control Houston here communicating with the crew where necessary. All hooks open. Perfect, that was the call we were waiting for with all 12 hooks now open. Next up, Dragon will execute a short Dragon burn just confirmed. before separation. 
And there was the call we were waiting for. This is a combination of Endeavor departing. Fair winds and falling seas in Miyaki Pasaki, my friends. Come on, Dragon. The circle will never be the same without you. Good words from our crew members departing space station right now. Listen, Dragon, it's been an absolute pleasure to serve aboard the space station and stand the watch. It's in great hands. Godspeed. Kojo, you'll never guess what I found. So next up, Dragon will execute. Roger. Thank you. So Dragon, as I've been trying to say, will execute a short uh, burn just before separation using a combination of its 12 Draco engines around and the base of the spacecraft. Just get Dragon away. This will break any stiction okay, between that. Dragon and the docking port. And then a second burn will help the spacecraft slowly start backing away. We have a fantastic view of a dragon coming in. Dragon SpaceX late call, depart burn zero was nominal. Perfect, and we've just received confirmation of the nominal burn that just took place. It's a very short burn using the service section of the Draco thrusters to break some stiction from Dragon and the International Space Station. All right, we have confirmed separation here at 4.05 p.m. Central, 2.05 p.m. Pacific, as the International Space Station and Dragon were, Dragon were flying approximately 260 statute miles over the Pacific. That means that Matt, Mike, Jeanette, and Alexander had completed their journey aboard the International Space Station, wrapping up over 230 days on the orbital outpost as they splash down off the coast of Florida early Friday morning. At this time, the crew are all suited up in their seats and they'll have an opportunity to get out of those suits in a short little while and prepare for their longer ride home. Here in Mission Control Houston, the team will continue to monitor the departure of Dragon as it exits the approach ellipsoid. Again, that approach ellipsoid is a two by two by four kilometer sphere that monitors arriving and departing spacecraft.
And he's needing to lay my last. Dragging away was confirmed. Roger that. Perfect. We continue to confirm nominal burns that are taking place as Dragon continues to depart the International Space Station. As we continue to monitor here jointly, on the Department right side of your screen, nominal, you will see And Dragon, at this time, you're go to DOF suits in 4.012. And I've got another reminder here that the big loop will be deactivated following Dragon's, Dragon's exit from the approach ellipsoid. And copies go for 4.01. So we have a nominal depart burn lasting approximately 16 seconds. And the team continues to monitor the departure of Dragon as it exits the approach ellipsoid, the two by two by four kilometer sphere. The two invisible boundaries around the International Space Station are the approach ellipsoid and the keep out sphere. So these are the spaces where they monitor the arriving and departing, departing spacecraft. And we are currently standing by for the next burn. And with that, we're just minutes away from the next burn, but we are going to pass it over as we stand by in mission control to our teams at in Hawthorne, Jesse and Sandra, back over to you as we continue to walk you through this process. And we've got a lot of action going on and we've got some really cool views from the International Space Station looking at Dra Dragon Endeavor as it's moving further and further away from the International Space Station. Um, we had uh, burn zero and departure burn one already completed. That departure burn one uh, is creating more and more distance between the International Space Station and Dragon and allowing Dragon to exit that um, keep out sphere as uh, Nilifer mentioned. Um, and again, some really cool views there. Station Eason on a big loop, uh, Endeavor's exited the keep out sphere. Break for Endeavor, Godspeed. We'll see you all in just a little bit. Camille. And on your screen, you're, you're continuing to see a view of Dragon following its undocking from the International Space Station at 2.05 p.m. while flying over the Pacific Ocean, approaching the western tip of South America. Now, we did just get word that Dragon has exited the keep-out sphere. You might have even seen some of those thruster firings on your screen as we got that call out. The keep-out sphere is an imaginary sphere or boundary that's 200 meters in radius around the space station. It's one of several safety zones set up to govern visiting vehicles, either arriving or departing the International Space Station. And you can continue to see these great views of Dragon as it departs the space station, slowly backing away. Uh, now, before moving into the keep out sphere, all of the spacecraft have to be configured where they would not cross the imaginary boundary for at least four orbits, even if for some reason the spacecraft lost all maneuvering. But again, we don't expect that to occur today. We're now waiting for Dragon to exit the approach ellipsoid, or the AE, which is another imaginary sphere. Uh, this time, it's a three-dimensional ellipsoid measuring four by two by two kilometers in the same family as the keep-out sphere. Now, one of the key differences with the AE is that vehicles outside of it have to be on what we call a 24-hour safe free drift trajectory. Now, that means the spacecraft would not cross into the approach ellipsoid for at least 24 hours, again, even if it lost all maneuvering for that call out once we hear confirmation um, that Dragon is outside of that AE. 
So to recap today a little bit, the hatches between the International Space Station and Dragon Endeavor were closed earlier at 12.24 p.m. Pacific. Since then, the crew has settled in to begin their 34-hour journey back to Earth following their undocking at 2.05 p.m. But prior to that, the joint NASA and SpaceX teams pulled go to proceed with undock. The undock com command was then sent at 2 p.m. Followed... SpaceX Dragon drag on the ground, cabin mic check. Got you loud and clear on the cabin mic. Good comm check on Dragon to Ground. Awesome, thank you so much. And you did hear some communications about a mic check between the ground and Dragon Endeavor. This is taking place because once Dragon exits the approach ellipsoid, the big loop will be de deconfigured. The big loop is that integrated loop between Mission Control Houston, Mission Control Hawthorne, the International Space Station, and Crew Dragon Endeavor. But now that Dragon has departed the International Space Station, all those folks don't need to be in the same comms loop anymore. So they're working to deconfigure that as soon as we get out of the approach ellipsoid. So just work through some of those steps a little bit as you heard now after the umbilicals were retracted just a few minutes ago and those hooks were opened we did see physical separation take place at 205 p.m pacific wall dragon was flying over the pacific ocean approaching the western tip of south africa Dragon then completed two of four departure burns and exited the keep out sphere. And we're now just a couple minutes away from Dragon crossing through that approach ellipsoid point to set the spacecraft and crew eight up for their path back to Earth. Again, Dragon is targeting to splash down off the coast of Florida, and there you see another great view of it. Our Cronus flight controller in Mission Control at Houston continuing to angle the camera so that we can keep a bird's eye view or an International Space Station eye view on Dragon as it continues to depart further and further away. But again, Dragon is targeted to splash down off the coast of Florida at 3.29 a.m. Eastern, 12.29 a.m. Pacific on Friday, October 25th, which will mark the completion of its seven-month science mission. And so again, we are continuing to get those great views. Um, perhaps if it comes into focus a little more, you might uh, be able to make out those thruster firings. But if you look at the very tip of Dragon, that's the nose cone, and it has remained open since Dragon launched all the way back in March. It remains open throughout the duration of docked operations and will remain open during these phasing um, hours as well, but it will be closed before we um, proceed to splash down in the DU orbit burn. And um, we'll be covering all of that more in our um, uh, splash down broadcast, but just a little preview of what's to come. So if you're just now joining us, you are tuned into you are tuned into the Crew 8 departure from the International Space Station. Uh, the crew has actually already departed the International Space Station. We've already completed um, the uh, unlatching of the umbilicals and hooks, hard capture hooks that mate Dragon to the International Space Station. We've completed uh, burn zero and departure burn one, and the vehicle with the four crew members inside are now moving further and further away from the International Space station, making their way outside of the, um, they've already exited the keep out sphere and now they're making their way outside of the AE or the approach ellipsoid. Again, this is to keep the crew safe. Um, th there's a number of choreographed maneuvers that the Dragon spacecraft has to do to make sure that it can safely depart away from the International Space Station and then it'll soon begin uh, maneuvers over the course of the next uh, 30 hours or so to make its way back down to Earth. And with Crew 8 now undocked from the International Space Station and on their way towards that targeted splashdown off the coast of Florida on Friday morning, let's take a moment to learn a little bit more about the crew we're bringing home.
Commander Matt Dominic was born and raised in Wheat Ridge, Colorado, and is married to Faith Dominic, and they have two daughters. Matt earned a Master of Science degree in Systems Engineering from the Naval Postgraduate School, and he was designated as a Naval Aviator in 2007. Matt has made two deployments to the North Arabian Sea, has flown close air support missions in support of Operation Enduring Freedom, and he has more than 1,600 hours of flight time in 28 different aircraft as well as 400 carrier-assisted landings and 61 combat missions. This was his first space flight. Dr. Michael R. Barrett, Crew 8's pilot, was selected by NASA in 2000. He's the only member of the crew of Crew 8 who's been to space before as part of Expedition 19 and 20 in 2009 and STS-133 in 2011. Before Crew 8, he spent 212 days in space. He is board certified in internal and aerospace medicine and has been awarded numerous times for his contributions to space medicine research. Michael lives in League City, Texas with his wife, Michelle, and their five children. And personal and recreational interests include sailing, boat restoration, writing, and cooking good food in harsh or remote places. And next up is Jeanette Epps. This was Mission Specialist Jeanette Epps' very first space flight. She's a Sierra Cruz, New York native and was a NASA fellow during graduate school. She then worked for the Ford Motor Company where she received a US patent for her research into auto collisions and countermeasure systems. After leaving Ford, she joined the Central Intelligence Agency or CIA for seven years where she worked as a technical intelligence officer before she became an astronaut in 2009. She has a Master of Science and Doctorate of Philosophy in Aerospace Engineering, and she's also a twin. And Mission Specialist Alexander Grabankin was also a first-time flyer for this mission. He graduated from the Irkutska Military Aerospace Engineering Institute in 2002, majoring in the Engineering, Maintenance, and Repair of Aircraft Radio Navigation Systems. He then attended the Moscow Technical University of Communications and Informatics, graduating with a degree in radio communications, broadcasting, and television. He was accepted into the Cosmonaut Corps in 2018 and served as a flight engineer while on board the International Space Station. And that is your Crew 8 crew who is currently making their way back down to Earth. And we're going to hand it over to JSC with Nilfer. How's it going? Hey, it's going well, Jesse. Thanks so much, both you and Sandra. So here, here, here in Mission Control Houston, um, in the International Space Station's flight control room, uh, teams are continuing to monitor joint operations of a Dragon um, as we exit the approach ellipsoid. Again, that's the two by two by four kilometer sphere around the International Space Station that teams use to monitor arriving and departing spacecraft. The live view of Dragon departing, it became a little tiny, blip on your screen here that you can see, but we see Dragon headed home as our Crew 8 crew splashed down off the coast of Florida early Friday morning. NASA astronauts Commander Matt Dominic, pilot Mike Barrett, mission specialist Jeanette Epps, alongside Roscosmos cosmonaut Alexander Grabankin, conducted several science experiments and technology demonstrations over the course of their 3,776 orbits of Earth. The space station is our orbiting laboratory where crew conduct all kinds of science and demonstrate technologies for the benefit of humanity. So here in Mission Control, the ground team works with the crew to conduct this science. And the researchers from all over the world have science on, spa on, sta on the space station. Over 200 experiments were worked on during Crew 8's time on orbit. And NASA astronaut Jeanette Epps spent some of her time extracting DNA for the genomic enumeration of antibiotic resistance in space experiment. So this experiment surveys the station and the antibiotic resistant organisms and sequences their DNA to examine adaptations to space. And the results from this investigation could support development of measures to protect astronauts and people in buildings and facilities on Earth, such as hospitals from resistant bacteria.
we see Dragon here getting further and further from the space station and getting closer and closer to Earth. And meanwhile, while NASA astronaut Matt Dominic was up in orbit, he processed cardiac tissue samples for the Redwire cardiac bioprinting investigation. Since tissue samples are bioprinted in microgravity, they are higher quality than those printed on the ground. So the results from this investigation could help to advance the production of organs and tissues for transplant and also improve 3D printing of foods and medicines on future long duration space missions. And with that, we've received confirmation that we've just exited the approach ellipsoid. Crew 8, Dragon, are on their way home. I'd be remiss not to talk about NASA astronaut Mike Barrett and what he did while he was in orbit. And he worked closely on an investigation called the Human Brain Organoid Models for Neurodegenerative Disease and Drug Discovery. And this investigation Dragon uses SpaceX human brain on organoids created for with your stem awareness, cells. The vehicle has exited the approach ellipsoid and is on a safe free drift trajectory. Great, we just heard that call out and science will always continue to be front and center with various crews that spend their time aboard the orbiting laboratory. And when they splash down, they'll be extracted first, followed by some of that science I just discussed, and it'll be delivered to researchers on the ground. So while we may not be able to air after we exit the approach ellipsoid, we'll continue to provide periodic updates through our mission audio commentary on nasa.gov. So with that, I will take a moment and hand it back to Sandra and Jesse in Hawthorne. Thanks so much, Nilifer. And as you mentioned, Dragon Endeavor has now exited the approach ellipsoid. You do see it there on your screen. It's that tiny little dot now. Uh, the approach ellipsoid is another imaginary shape. It's three-dimensional, uh, measuring four kilometers by two kilometers by two kilometers, and it's in the same family as the keep out sphere. Now, one of the key differences with the approach ellipsoid is that vehicles outside it have to be in that 24-hour safe free drift trajectory, which we've discussed, which means the spacecraft would not cross into the approach ellipsoid for at least 24 hours, again, if for some reason all maneuvering was lost. And with that, Crew 8 has officially departed the International Space Station. It will take them about 34 hours until they make their way back down home to Earth. The crew is currently doffing or removing their spacesuits to settle in for the ride home, and Dragon is targeted to splash down off the coast of Florida at 3.29 a.m. Eastern Time or 12.29 a.m. Pacific Time on Friday, October 25th, followed by the crew getting picked up at sea by a SpaceX recovery vessel. As they rest up, our teams here will continue to keep an eye on the weather to ensure a safe return for Dragon and our Crew 8 astronauts. And though our coverage here in Hawthorne is wrapping up for today, we will turn it over to the NASA team in Houston to take us through the next phases of the Crew 8 mission. Our friends at the Johnson Space Center will provide continuous live audio only coverage along Crew 8's journey home until we rejoin. You can find the audio only link by visiting nasa.gov live and clicking the mission audio link or by searching for NASA mission audio live feed on YouTube at go.nasa.gov slash live ISS. Meanwhile, we will rejoin for live visual coverage starting roughly one hour prior to splashdown. And as always, you can find mission updates on X at NASA, at SpaceX, and on the web at nasa.gov. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you and our Crew 8 astronauts very soon.